think we begin to start noticing patients with allergy issues from early spring. Uh, even late February time, there seems to be a definite increase in the number of people wandering through the door with symptoms which are probably going to be related to allergy and hay fever type symptoms. Allergy Awareness Week is coming up from the 22nd to the 28th of April and that's very well placed time-wise so that there's going to be lots of extra information out there for people to help manage their allergies in general. The classic symptom that one's looking for with allergy is a symptom of itch. The eye, patients will come in and they're just, their eyes will just feel generally comfortable, but itch is the, the thing that really is synonymous with allergy. Um, the eyes are often a little bit pink, and watery, a little bit of increased mucus discharge, um, but that symptom of itch is the, uh, the characteristic one that we're often looking for. Together with history, so if someone is known to have allergic problems, they've got skin conditions, or they have known allergy in the past, obviously that's a really important thing to pick up on early on. Um, practitioners should encourage their patients and customers to seek professional advice, see their ICAO practitioner and get the diagnosis confirmed in the first instance. Once you have a diagnosis of allergy, I think there's lots that can be done to keep patients happy and comfortable in their lenses. For me, the daily disposable modality is one of the best approaches to, con to managing uh, allergic patients in contact lenses. Because you're putting a fresh, clean lens in the eye every day, the chances of deposition build up on those lenses, which might enhance or exacerbate irritation, is minimised. So daily disposables for me would be the way to go. I think one of the best tips I can offer is the systematic use of non-preserved unit dose artificial teardrops. Um, what often happens is that just consistent use of those will flush out lots of the allergens which might be irritating the eyes and offer a lot of symptomatic relief because they're non-preserved, you haven't got the concern about uh, secondary irritation from preservatives within eye drops. Um, beyond that, some patients may need anti-allergy preparations, some of which um, the uh, purchasable over the counter. Um, got to be very mindful of using those drops carefully pre and post lens wear because they'll often uh, contain preservatives and what one doesn't want is a preservative build-up within contact lenses because that's just going to exacerbate problems. Um, some patients might well benefit from oral antihistamines, but again, that's, it's good to have a discussion with the eye care practitioner about that because some antihistamine and oral antihistamine preparations are prone to inducing dryness. So you've got to mitigate that against any benefits that um, uh, might be accrued from that. And there's lots of different ones on the market and some suit some people better than others. Very important to identify which allergen you think you're is sparking you off and try and start that prophylactic treatment well in advance of the known pollen burst. Some patients find some symptomatic relief from using cold compresses so um, end of the day if the eyes are irritated and swollen so a cool compress, a nice clean face cloth over the face to cool down those heated lids might sometimes be beneficial. Patients should always consult their eye care practitioner if they've got any issues about ocular irritation or concerns about comfort or vision. The eye care practitioner is there to help them. There are some fantastic industry tools out there sat, sat beside, behind some of the commercial websites that the industry produces, um, so there's, such as the Allergy Guide behind the Johnson & Johnson AccuView um, site. That's a really excellent reference point for customers to access.